Hey there. Oh, let me get settled here. Oh. <laughs> okay. How you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Um, let me just get settled here. Like I always do. Hey, it's actually there today. And it's wrong. <laughs> okay. It's saying that I am uh, the person who streamed last. That's okay. Da, 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 da. Share to a page. Okay. That went by much faster. Okay. Hello, hello. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. All right, people are piling in. Okay, we're going to we are going to start where we left off last week, um doing this Mitch Layaway Dragon. And if you can't remember, this is kind of where we left off. We uh, still had to do these wings. Kind of excited to get this going. Um let me shut down some things in the background. All right. All right, Twitch is rocking. Okay. Just need to make sure we're good to go. All right. Um, so uh, the, the next step I wanted to do was uh, stitch the rest of the, the things together. So I want to stitch the jaw, the arms, the legs, and then Z remesh it. So that's, that's kind of the idea. Hey, what's up, Neil? Welcome, welcome. Hey. What's up, Inspire? For some reason, Inspire, your name is blue, like dark blue. It's hard to see on my background. But Okay. And then we'll get to the wings later. I'm going to leave the actual webbing of the wings as a separate object. Hey, what's up, Harry? Aloha, indeed. I need to have like a margarita or something while I'm doing this. But water is going to have to work. Stay hydrated. Okay. And then we'll we'll get them colored up too. So some of the things that I want to do, I don't want to stick his arms to his body, and I don't want to stick his foot to his leg. So I'm gonna do a few things here. Because right now, if I were to stitch this all together, it would indeed stick like the legs to the body, that kind of thing. You guys hear me okay? Uh, I like to set my mic so you can see my characters behind me. <laughs> okay, so d did everybody have a good weekend? I'm gonna hide these toes and mask this off. and rotate this foot down. It's gonna look strange for a moment, but I just need to give some space there. He's gonna look like he's floating or flying right now. <laughs> okay, and then I wanna do the same thing with these arms. I'm just gonna pull them out, like rotate them out away from the body. Okay, something like, uh, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> it's going to be, have a strange pose for a moment. I'm going to straighten out his, his hands as well. So they're straight and then I'll bend them back here in a moment. Oops. I'm listening to The Cure today, if anybody wants to listen along with me. <laughs> One of my favorite bands of all time. But i it's weird because I only really, I like several of their albums, like Disintegration and um, some others, but I my favorite is Mixed Up because it's it's been remixed and it's um, 
you know, the cure is kind of solemn and slow and sad, but this is all upbeat and uh, it's been remixed with better drums and things like that. I like it a lot. Anyway, are there any Cure fans out there? Okay. Just gonna move the legs away from the body slightly. But I wanna pivot from the hip where it's sticking. Is there a way to add only your custom menu and not the whole UI? Absolutely, Mark. Um, I'm trying to think of how how you can do that. Um, can you send me, Mark, can you send me an email? Just send me an email to shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I will, um, I'll get that figured out for you and, and, and get you set up. Okay. So I'm just gonna pull these legs out away from the body just a bit and then I'll push them back in when I'm done here. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna look really funny for a moment. And then I wanna, I kinda wanna duplicate this whole whole thing off into its own thing, so. Hey, what's up, Charlie? Yes, Mark, you're welcome, no problem. Okay. Da, 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 da. Now, I wanna keep the eyes separate. I'm moving those up to the top. I wanna keep the horns. And the wings, let's see, we can delete this one. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of, uh, hey, what's up, David? Do a little bit of organizing here. Why do I have two? One is... <laughs> Going back to Stephen, let's see. I want to keep the higher resolution one, delete this one. I'm just going to organize my file here for a second. Uh, and I think I'm going to make an insert multi mesh brush for these scales down the back of him. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun thing to learn, right? Told Neil I want him to do a Tweety Pie next when he does his model. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, body, arms. I, I don't know why I'm naming all these because they're gonna merge here, but I don't think I'm using this head any longer. So we can delete this. Hold on a second, this. The lower jaw. I think I'm done with this one, right? Let me see. I'm trying to figure out what I have and what I don't need. <laughs> I think I'm done with this one because I, I attached it and Z remeshed it. It's been a whole week. I'm trying to remember where I was, where I left left off. Yeah, so I don't need this anymore. And the lower jaw. I'm done with this horn. It's always good to to clean up your scene and then save it as a new one. Working to the first beta. Awesome, David. Did you were you able to get the, um the delete lower subdivisions and apply the dynamic subdivisions. Did you, did I ask you about that? I think I did, right? Just curious. Thank you, by the way. So um, David's uh, volunteering to write a 3D character workshop plugin for ZBrush. It just has a whole bunch of really cool utilities, which um, yes, thank you so, so much. It's just super cool. And it's almost finished. Awesome. Um, one more uh, really cool thing, David, while I have you here is um, see this, this GRP, this group button. Um, if 
you could say turn that off for all subtools, that is a utility that is used if you're going to export all of your objects as OBJs at one time. Otherwise, if you don't turn that off for every single subtool, that's why I have it out on my user interface, it will uh, split them up into chunks, which is completely bizarre. So, okay. Any tip for the wings? Like what, any, any questions in particular with those wings? Um, I built this in the last stream and I'm going to continue putting in the webbing during this stream, but first I'm kind of reposing him a little bit because I'm going to merge him all together. And I'm just cleaning up my scene. So if you have any particular questions, let me know. Open his mouth so it doesn't get sewn shut. Okay. And let's now save it as a new Z tool. Okay. I'm just going to look at the placement of these things just to make sure that when I combine them, they, they're going to, they're not going to look like uh, a string of sausages. Okay, come on, topological. ankle up I might have to inflate that uh, that foot hey there Chandra how's it going so I want to hide this not mask it off I want to mask off the bottom of that foot I don't want to touch it. I just want to inflate the top and give it a little bit more volume here. Just so where it connects, it's not so super thin. That works. Try not to get lazy and start working on the mini course. That's awesome. Um, I need to tell you that uh, Scott just barely finished editing the new one. So I have a new four part mini series for a new, a new mini bust course. So if you want to wait for that one, it's going to be out hopefully super duper soon. And it's, yeah, it's going to replace the old one. So, um, with the new techniques, you know, the sculptors pro and things like that. So it's a new four part video series and, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's turned out really well. So I'm happy, super happy with it. Um, that will be released very, very soon. For those of you who don't know what she's talking about, um, I have an online course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. And you can go check it out right now. And um, it's, it's different from other courses online because it's lifetime access. Um, what that means is um, I constantly update it. I've had it out for three years. And I continually add new lessons to it for free. Like this one. I'm redoing... Uh, a mini a mini course that I had in the major course. It's like a mini version, so you can get started and get um, really, um, you know, small wins. So if you if you're you know creating art and you're actually feeling like you're getting somewhere, uh, that's what the mini bus head course is. So and it's a it's funny because it's another Mitch Leoway uh, concept, and yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Okay. You easily get distracted and lazy, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that we've posed this guy up, let's combine him. Uh, yeah, you can always, I'm going to archive that one. So you can always go back to the old one because the old one is, is going to, co well, it covers um, how to take it all the way to retopology, UVs, baking, and into marmoset all, all the way. So this new one does not have that. This new one is... Um, just taking it to the high resolution version and then you can follow the other one to see how you would take it into uh, you know retopologize it and then put, take it to marmoset and that kind of stuff and that's the kind of stuff that I don't cover here in the live stream a lot of people ask me well 
why you know why do you give away so much for free and this is a lot of content don't get me wrong and uh, i love to just share stuff for free um but the stuff that i don't share is things about 3d printing retopology uvs map baking you know all of the production stuff i kind of um keep keep inside my course so and then i i, I talk a lot more about the intricacies of exactly what i'm doing and I, I kind of just brush over it here. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Let's come combine all this stuff together. Open this down. So I'm gonna merge this down. There we go. I know that, Swix. They, um, so that, that will, thanks for letting me know, by the way, but that will tend to happen if somebody that is planning on streaming does not stream so the streamer before me this is pixel logic lives uh twitch channel and there are a lot of streamers on here and the person that goes before me uh does stream in japanese so that's that's who it was <laughs> and i apparently he didn't stream so that shifts everything back one okay Oh, it just changed? Awesome. So somebody changed it. Probably Kyle. Uh, is there a current stream recording that you could point me to that shows off the new way of laying stuff out with Sculptress? Um, I that's that's exactly what I was just talking about. Harry is um this new mini bust head course goes over that. And there's also another lesson coming that specifically goes over Sculptress Pro and how to use it. So very, very soon. Very soon. So um yeah. I appreciate your patience on that. I've been wanting to re release it for like a month now, so. Okay. Now, uh, before I stitch this, I, I wanna get everything kind of even topology and I think I'm gonna tessimate it all. So I'm gonna apply this and just to see what it looks like when I tessimate it. Oh, got to delete the subdivision levels. Okay. What? Oh, it did it. Okay. There it goes. That's a little, little heavy. There we go. Okay, and the fingers are still holding up. Maybe, yeah, that'll work. I might have to inflate them slightly. Okay, let's stitch these together. All right, except turn this, turn this back on. Now it's all stitched together. And you can see, like, that's why I pulled the legs out, because otherwise it would have stitched the leg to the body, the foot to the leg, so on and so forth. And that's not what I want. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this. Hide the original and then try uh, to Z-remesh this. See if we can get a clean result. Uh, it's more like Dino Topo in Blender. Um, yeah, that's the closest thing. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, remesh. Where are you, the remesher? Okay, I'm going to try it with groups on just to see what it does, but I think it'll probably just destroy itself, so. Uh, okay. Let's just try it. <laughs> yeah. Dynamesh is more like the other one. I'm trying to remember what it's called. But there's one in there a lot like, hey, it didn't do too bad of a job. It did kind of make... Okay, I got to undo that and just... I want to clean this, this up a little bit back here so we get a better transition flow. Voxel remit yeah, it's yeah, it's it's more like that, I guess. Okay. 
And I'm actually going to change this toe poly group to something else. It's too close to this green and I think it's stitching it in there. So you kind of want to inspect your model and make sure it doesn't have groups that are next to each other that are too close in color because it'll, it'll Z-remesh them together. Okay, let's try that again. And it, you can also add more poly groups if you want by using um, masking. So say if I wanted to, I don't know, like put a poly group, make his head a different poly group or something. I could mask it. Let's hide the lower jaw. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, and I can make his head a new poly group. And then um, when, when I do, when I Z-remesh it, it will, um, it will keep the new group and try and, you know, make that stay like in this neck. If I want a line to go across this neck, you can do it like this. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? And that will uh, go across there like that. And I can do the same thing kind of down here if I wanted to. Not that it matters because uh, Z Remesher will do a great job at keeping it anyway. <laughs> I think I saw a dragon. Yeah, a dragon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Bonk. Fingers crossed. Z Remesher, do your magic. What are you up to, Jimmy? Anything cool today? There you go. That's not too bad. Let's see what, how it did with the fingers. Usually the fingers are the ones that get destroyed, but it's all right. It, is, it did destroy the nostrils, but that's okay. Okay. I'm trying to decide if that's what I want to keep. I think it, I think it is. I think it's enough. Okay, so let's go and repose it back to what it was. So now our jaw's connected, our arm's connected to the body, and we can go clean all this stuff up. We can turn on dynamic subdivisions now to make them smooth. We can use inflate to fix these fingers that got kind of destroyed a little bit. Ronald circle. Oh, really? Awesome. I'm looking for a way to stitch things together without Z remesh by union. Why is that, David? Um, there are a few ways. Uh, Dynamesh is one of those. That's how I used to do it. But Dynamesh is, um, it's kind of messy, it, or it can be. So, for example, the fingers would have gotten way more destroyed if I would have Dynamesh them together. Oh, you can't script remesh by union? Ah. Um, so essentially what's happening with uh, remesh by union is it's doing a live Boolean operation without doing any live Boolean stuff. So, um, and both milk call Robin Hood, awesome. Can't wait to see. So, uh, does does that make sense, David? So, um, when you if you put a bunch of stuff in a folder and you have live boolean turned on, you can go to that folder. There's a gear icon on that folder, and you can choose, um, you can choose, uh, make make met. I can't remember what is it called. I'm trying to remember. Let me put this in a folder. Uh, horns, sure, horns. Okay, so the horns are in a folder. This gear right here. Uh, so when you say, where is it? Boolean folder, that thing right there, Boolean folder. That is, that's essentially doing what remesh by union does, but it also takes into effect anything that's being Booleaned out and makes a brand new mesh and makes a new subtool at the bottom. So I don't know if you can utilize that. Um, or if that would work or not, I don't, I don't know. You can use the bridge tool, like bridge to, to stitch stuff together. I think you have to have two open holes though, right, Tim? Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to switch this to Zebro modeling so I can see the surface a little better. Oops. Recently stumbled across this great artist Puka Doodle. Sure. Hey, Poke Wizard, it's been good. Thanks very much. Oops. So, Tim, are you talking about the one that's in the the Z Modeler brush, or is that, or where is that? Which one are you talking about? This did, this did, I should have straightened this leg out because it did stitch a little too much back here. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I straighten things out because you get, you get this, right? So now I got to decide, do I roll it back <laughs> and fix that? Or do I try and make this work? I probably roll it back. So let's roll this back to before I Z remeshed it. I didn't do too much to it. The stitch this is I don't know that I can roll it back too much further I yep yeah. so this this is a an absolute showcase of why you duplicate your mesh off Come on well crap all right let me load this back in or save off a version there you go Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes you just have to back it up and fix things. Okay, so let's do this. Back the truck up. See if I can do this. Hmm. Trying to get the mask come on sorry i'm having a rough a rough go at this there we go i want to unmask this and bend these all together and straighten his leg out so i don't get it stitched back there okay we can smooth the rest out a little bit There we go. That would do it. Let's inflate this. You got it. Well, why aren't you sleeping? <laughs> Get to sleep. I'm going to clip, clip that off. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Sorry, you have to watch me do this again. Got to get it right. And there's usually, well, one, once you're once you're skilled enough or knowledgeable enough about ZBrush, there's usually uh, no hole that you can dig that you can't dig yourself back out of. So <laughs> this is me digging myself out of a hole that I created. And the more often you save, the less you have to go back. Uh, Brian, yes. 
the these days sound like an old guy these days yes i i tend to use the gizmo way more than the transpose tool so when i use the transpose tool is typically when i'm posing um even then i i still use the gizmo quite often and then when i'm doing a specific bend to an object because i have uh, a bit more like i bent these fingers if you watch last week's stream you can see me bend these fingers using the transpose tool but um typically i will use the gizmo uh just um i'm i'm a you know i come from maya 3d studio max the the old box modeling programs and they always had a gizmo and i i love it when they added it <laughs> the only thing that sucks is um i recorded my course right before they launched the gizmo so all of my lessons i i teach the transpose tool and so um the uh all my all my lessons are recorded with the transpose tool i do have a gizmo lesson in there but um it's like yeah that was that was kind of a a, a bit of a a crappy thing at the time it's like dang it gotta re-record all these with the gizmo now <laughs> which i still plan on doing all right so now that leg is undone we can mesh these back together but i'm going to save it again as free do it again okay yep you're welcome for sure okay merge down and boom okay i'm gonna go ahead and inflate these fingers beforehand whoa still got the clip clip on clip on okay so let's inflate these the connection just so when i z remesh these so if you were to dynamesh these, David, uh, if you didn't have the dynamesh cranked high enough, these fingers would get stitched together, even though there's a space between them. And when you use remesh by union, that doesn't happen as, as often. I'm also going to uh, create more of a, so Z remesher follows peaks and valleys really well. And you'll see that this, the nostril is kind of nondescript at the moment, so. I'm going to pull this nostril into the head more to give my Z remesher a bit more of, of a surface, a, a valley to follow. It will always help. So Z remesher likes to follow polygroups, polygroup edges, like around this mouth, and they also like to follow peaks and valleys. So those are two ways you can control the flow of your Z remesh. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this off again at this point, um, not after I stitch it. <laughs> That's what I should have done in the first place, but. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> Gotta love this guy's pose now, it's pretty funny. It's like he's filleted out, like he's gonna get dissected or something, all right. So I'm gonna apply this, whoops. Hey Marcelo, how's it going? Okay. And again, we'll decimate. looking at those fingers and the nostrils are that's still too small or too large there we go okay okay let's try this again remesh by union yeah david i think there are too many steps to automate all this stuff i think you can automate some steps but it's just kind of too much happening. Okay. Hey, Jorge, I'm doing well, thanks. Welcome to the stream. Okay. And then I want to Z-remesh this at a higher 
Let me look at something. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try something with this um, this plugin. This is a really, really good plugin. Um, easy remesh. It is a paid plugin, but it's only seven bucks or something like that. I love it. And basically, you choose your density beforehand, and then you can you can click on one of these options. And if you ho hover over this button, you'll see that it says run easy Z rent the easy remesh without tessimation. I just tessimated it. That's what it's doing is it tessimated I, because I wanted to see it from for myself. But if I hold down alt and click it, it will add the tessimation step. So I've already done it. I don't need to do it. So I'm just going to click this and see what it does. Take a little drink, go to the bathroom. <clears throat> it doesn't take that long. Oh goodness, I'm trying to breathe my water instead of drink it. All right, thanks mute button. Almost done. There we go. That's cleaner. All right, we're looking pretty good. And you'll notice the back of the legs. I mean, it doesn't have a, an, an amazing flow. If I wanted to straighten out those legs more, I could get a better flow going all the way down those legs. But I, I don't really think I care at this point. Because that's the thing with ZBrush. When you're using, uh, when you're using ZBrush, you're typically uh, rebuilding the mesh over and over and over again until you're, you finally retopologize it by hand at the end. Anyway, that's, that's how it will typically work anyway. Okay, so let's uh, just get these back into position. Okay. I think I'm going to use this polygroup to help me with my mask. And then you can blend it. Okay, and then we can just kind of center our gizmo where we want to bend it from, just somewhere in this mass. Just bend it back, and we'll need to rotate it straight, kind of back where it was before we started this whole Z remeshing journey, and then I need to bend that leg back. Actually, um, I, could sh I should probably do that before. That's a tip for you guys. Um, if, if you want to, you can always use the straight edge of the lasso mask. So the lasso, if you hold down control, if you start from a point and start to make a circle, you can go like this and you'll notice there's all, always a straight edge. Okay. Can you see at the very bottom? There's that straight edge. I use that all the time to slice that straight edge through my models. So I want to do a straight edge through the knee to the back of the knee. So what I'll do is I'll start on one side of the knee. And since this is a shorter distance to go this way, I can go to the back of the knee. And you can see, since I've aligned my camera, I can shoot that, that straight edge right through there, okay? And get a nice straight mask cut, okay? It's, it's a little bit more uh, straight than if I were to do it the old way, which, it, well, not the old way, the other way, which is hold down control and drag down the appendage and let go because that's it's it's not as controllable that way if that makes sense so then you can just invert that mask and maybe do one level of blending move your gizmo and then um, just rotate that leg back into position and then clear the mask and smooth it out a little bit just clean it up and that sometimes will get that little uh, pocket of fat that grows around. If you, you know, if you bend your knee back all the way, you get this little, this little fun pocket of fat right there. You can exaggerate that with inflate. Turn dynamic subdivisions on again, smooth this out. And see, we can start to get a, a better looking bend in our leg like that. And just start to smooth this out. Now, one thing that the easy remesher does to be aware of is it will automatically crease 
as, as part of the algorithm, it will add creases in between polygroups. So if you if you've uh, uh, you know started to smooth this out and it's not smoothing out like this, just know that there's a a crease. So just click on uncrease all in this menu. By the way, this if you want this custom menu, you can always go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give it away for free. You can go grab it. It comes with the user interface as well. So I can just start to smooth that out. I want to round this heel off. All right. And this is typically too, too strong when, I, when you first use this crease. So turn it down. Just kind of crease that back and you'll get a better transition. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Mark, I was like, middle finger? You trying to flip me the middle finger? <laughs> what the? <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, middle finger. <laughs> now I got to roll it back, mass this off. Yeah, I got to do that again. Gosh dang it. Thanks, Mark. I didn't see it till I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Me, me I want to keep it. <laughs> I'm flipping the bird so hard right now. <laughs> oh. Any of you guys know what that's from? See if you a little bit of a I'll give you a hint adult adult swim trivia you'd use the recall history brush oh I, I forget about that thing yeah you're totally right hmm that's a new thing that I just oh, I, I forget that that's the thing and I need I need to get get it in my brain that, that that's the thing so recall brush what he's talking about and thank you thank you guys um but recall history brush. Oh, that's rake. Where is it at? I honestly, I don't think I've used it since they released it, and I need to because it's a lifesaver. What, what is it called? Recall history. And it, is it in the brushes? I can't recall. I can't recall. Maybe I should use it on myself. <laughs> oh goodness. Probably some recall Z history. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, you let me know exactly what it's called. I'll go find it and show it. Okay. Okay, let's go back and do what I did because I forgot about the recall history brush. History recall. Okay. BH. There it is. Oh, it's, it's funky looking. Okay. Um, so this history recall brush, say, say you did something stupid like, like I just did and, uh, you know, made something like that and didn't realize it. Just like, oh, dang it. I need to fix that because it was off my screen and I wasn't paying attention to it. And I'm working down here until I zoom back out and I'm like, oh, crap. Just like I did before. So if you hit B for the brush menu, H for history and R for recall then you can essentially go like this no what does it say the current recall brush that was stored by using oh you have to store a mesh at a certain point i have not used this brush i'm not gonna lie control click on the desired undo history stage oh got it got it okay so i need to roll this back to before i made the mistake so right there, hit control, click it. No, control click on the desired undo history stage. Right there. I don't know. Need to make an en entry in the history. How do I do that? So if I roll this back one before it was there, it's saying I need to control click something. 
So you control click on the desired undo history stage, which is here, right? You guys teach me now. So I'm control clicking on this. Okay. And then if I roll this forward, yeah, then I still get this. Press Alt. Oh, I'm pushing Alt. I'm a dummy. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. It, it made it light up right here. Okay. I, I, I got it. I was being dumb and I hit Alt instead of Control when it's telling me to use Control. What? I can't do symmetry? <laughs> okay. Let's crank the intensity on this thing. Uh, it's not working as well as I thought it would. All right. Well, I'm going to, off, off camera, I will learn it. Okay. All right. Anyway, yeah, off, off camera, I will, I will teach it to myself and show you guys how it works. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's me fumbling through the history brush. Okay. So let's get rid of the creases. Increase all. And then just kind of smooth this out. Turn this intensity up real cool brush I believe you I just need to learn how it works I need to be better I'll make a lesson on it okay before I do that I need to I need to do it I, I'm adjusting it too soon I need to adjust this first Whoa. Uh, I don't have uh, symmetry turned on. That's why. Yeah, Ikaruga, it's simple when you know it, how to use it. Do you get paid for sessions? Uh, no, I'm I'm a volunteer for Pixelogic when I stream, um, so I do not get paid. But I get paid in other ways, which um, they allow me to promote my online course. That's what I do full time for a living. So that's why I promote my course when I'm on here. All right. Hold on a second. I'm going to do half on the easy remesher. This is a little too dense for me, so I'm going to half it. All right, Jimmy, thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out. If you guys don't know, uh, Jimmy Levinsky is a fantastic character modeler, and you should go follow him. He's a great one to study. <laughs> thanks, man. Have a great week. The Thumbless Dragon. Pete, Pete the Thumbless Dragon. Should we name him Dave? It's true. Jimmy's true. All right. Okay, let's see if I can get a better mask on this leg. What am I doing? Okay. Better. Be better. Ah, sweet. That's what I want. All right. There we go. I'll get I'll get imposed someday. I promise. 
basically he's back back to where he was before we did all the Z remeshing stuffs. Can you tell me how you add your ruler by default on startup project? I try my own tool, but always gets replaced by a spear. Um, so yes, the, the ruler project is a project and it's not a Z tool. So you can save a project by hitting control S that saves a project or by going up to uh, file save as right here that saves a project which will include all of your Z tools and the my ruler project that's I typically will save Z tools out um, and I don't save projects I use a project to save all of my settings instead um, and so you can get my ruler project what he's talking about is up here there's a ruler um, you can see it right here and I use that to measure my characters for 3D printing, for going back and forth between Maya and things like that. Um, so you can see it here. Let me change back to skin sheet four. So, uh, and I give this away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And it has like the average female height, average male height. Since this is in metric system, you can use it for millimeters, centimeters, and meters. Um, if you follow this one meter, two meter guide here, and that will that's what I use to go back and forth between Maya and if you're going just just to note this um, if you're going back and forth between Maya you look under this export setting and it has the scale 100 and that will go back and forth between Maya uh, that's that's the uh, if you're doing OBJs or FBX or anything like that going back and forth if you're going back and forth between blender you'll need to change this scale to one just so you know that, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. But um, to answer your question, if you want to import, you need to import a model into here, into a, a project or start a new project or whatever, you can adjust all your settings, import the, um, import a model and then save the project out. And then every time you open that project, your Z tool will come loaded in there already. So what about some discount for this workshop? I'm not currently running any discounts at the moment. Um, I may in the future, but at the moment I'm, it's, uh, I don't have any promotions happening at the moment. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so in doing this, I need to adjust just that belly I kind of squished it down let's do topological All right, and I'm gonna use that masking trick with the flat edge right there just to get it to mask through that ankle. Mm. Okay. I'm actually launching uh, the 3D Studio Workshop 1.5 really soon. And what that is, is essentially a new theme, a new look, a whole bunch of new lessons, a new, uh, I do pro, I do industry interviews. I have a bunch of interviews in, in, in my course. And I just, get, I just did a new one with Paul DC, which is, he's one of the uh, Pixelogic Master Sculptors that they've been doing the series on the Master Master Sculptors, and uh, he's just a, he's another really fantastic uh, sculpting artist if, or character artist, stylized character artist. So if you want to check it out and study him, Paul DC is his name. Does soon mean this? Uh, it means like within the. I'm really trying in the next few weeks, like 
I, I want to say in the next few days. That's that's my goal, but you know how things go. <laughs> I would say it's 2.0, but it's uh, I have larger plans for 2.0, so I'm calling it 1.5. <laughs> But and and just like ZBrush, um, updates are free. So all the people that are in there currently, it's they don't have to pay extra to get more lessons. You just get them. I always love that model, that that business model with ZBrush. I mean, I bought ZBrush a long time ago, and I've not paid for a single update. I love. Who wouldn't love that? So I decided to, hey, um, that's a good business model. Makes me happy. How much is ZBrush these days? Um, it depends on the version. It depends on if you want to do subscription. Um, yeah, you can check it out at pixelogic.com and it will you can see what the cost of it is today but I tried the core mini I have and uh, it's a lot of fun it reminds me of uh, Sculptress quite a bit but um, it's cool because it gives you it kind of gets rid of all the all the extra stuff and all that extra stuff just kind of gets out of your way and just lets you sculpt and lets you focus it's pretty cool and it uses Sculptress Pro which um, I just I use Sculptress Pro on this dragon so um it doesn't do you know of course it's a really light version so there's there's a handful of things that um it doesn't do but what what it does it does really well it lets you get the feel of sculpting right so uh mark yes that's that's in the plans that won't be part of um 1.5 but that is in the plans I've been working with Scott a, a lot with that. If you saw the uh, if you saw the the renders of those characters that I did on on this stream on the live stream, let me see if I can show you. Da, 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 da. Mm. Hold on a second. Da, da, da. Okay, these guys. So these guys were rendered in Blender, sculpted in ZBrush. So I sculpted both these characters during the live stream here and you can watch those back. So um, this is what I'm gonna be teaching, how to render like this in Blender. And this, and both using EV and Cycles, they're really great renderers. And I'll probably push this dragon over there and render it out. It also has a Discord channel. Oh, nice. Oh, thanks. Okay, speaking of colors, I really want to get this guy some color going on. What time we got? It's been an hour? Okay. All right. Ugh. Let's close his mouth up. I don't want to bend his... Sorry, now I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's comparable. It's not, uh, it, it takes a little more to get a good render out of it, but you can get very, very similar results, if not exactly the same. Um, it just takes a bit more knowledge and a bit more working with it. Just like, uh, Eevee is very similar to Marmoset. It's a real time render. It's like a game engine, right? Like Unreal or something like that. Whereas uh, Cycles is a lot like Keyshot, which is a ray tracing renderer. But rendering is more about your lighting knowledge than anything. 
like everybody's like what what render did you use well it's it, it at the end of the day it really doesn't matter it's like asking what what brush did you use you know everybody wants the magic pill but it's more about just like with sculpting and and using these brushes it's more about your knowledge of anatomy and design and that kind of stuff and that's all that kind of stuff is what i teach in the course and um it's less about the brushes you use you know you i could use just the move brush and the smooth brush and get pretty good results as far as and, and that's why uh the the core mini is so good because it just has a handful of brushes and that's all you really need you don't really need crazy stuff so you can't you caught me late that's okay um pixelogic will post this on youtube so you can watch it after so you won't miss out making these toes bigger and i want a row of kind of knuckles behind these toes like the first knuckle There's also a free octane version. <laughs> What's up, some noob? It's all good. Oops, too fast. Robinson. Hey, what's up, Ian? How you doing? Yeah, I, Ian, I just, just barely finished. I just barely was talking about it. And, um, but yes, I have. <laughs> and uh it's it's fun it's a it's a fun little if you just want to get in there and sculpt you know just super rough it gives you a sphere and a block i should i should uh do a demo with it on this live stream sometime but it, it yeah your timing it, it literally will give you a, you can choose from a sphere or a block and it gives you like six brushes six materials and you uh yeah you can just play with it it's a lot of fun and it's it's fun because it kind of lets you know or, or helps you decide if you want to get into sculpting or not because it's just a you know kind of dipping your toe into the the pool of sculpting it's a lot like um reminds me of sculptress in that way a few more you know a few more things and a few I think the main thing I wish it had was uh, duplicating objects because that's the way I work, obviously. Um, but it, uh, the way they want you to work in there is basically like building up with brushes and cutting down with brushes rather than duplicating objects. Oh yeah, it's perfect for kids. Perfect. Because there's not much to it, you know, as far as like it, it gets out of your way. And just lets you sculpt, which is cool. Okay, let's see. I think these are a little lump too lumpy now. Let's move those out. I think I'm gonna do do the volume with volume rather than lumps. That's better. Okay. Um, well, you know what? I hope my student doesn't mind, but I'm going to show you my student work or my my student community for a second. There's a student in there that actually did some amazing stuff with with the core mini and I'm going to show it off right now. So, this is and this is a lot like Zebra Central. Yes, I I may have uh taken a cue from them. I have a top row um, these are from my students currently, um, and this guy right here, let's see, what is his name? Jamie. So Jamie made all of these in ZBrush Core Mini, including this amazing gremlin, right? So yeah, hard surfaces. I mean, they're, 
it's not like super solid, but it's pretty dang solid, right? Yeah, that's you can take it that far. Really cool, really cool. So anyway, and you get a preview of of the student workshop. Yes, you can print 3D files from it. That is that is a thing, which is super fun. Yeah, so so not to not to pitch the course, but hey, if you want to create awesome characters, come join us. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, I think Let's, uh, I'm going to fill this guy with a color just to get started on just playing with colors here. I'm trying to decide if, uh, if I go red, green, maybe orange, maybe orange, like a red orange. Uh, hey, Tim Dan, any reason why we'd want to use core mini versus the full version of ZBrush? Um, the so the main reason to try out core mini is if you don't currently have zbrush right um it's like a it's almost like a kick the tires try it before i buy it kind of a thing um it's it's just a it's it's really really limit it's like a vertical slice is what we used to call it in game development right it's a vertical slice of zbrush it's just like all of these little things to try before you buy the, the major version of it okay so um, and it's free. That's why it's it's try because it's free. You can go grab it right now and just start messing around with it. It's free. Um, it's uh, you know there's there are some limitations, but it's you can as you, as I just showed you can do a lot with it, even though it does have limitations. So um, and it's it's just it'll let you get in there and get the feel of everything and see if you actually want to invest in the full version of ZBrush. So super cool. So Neil, um, yeah, purple like the one from Little Pony. So what I'm gonna do, just so you know, is I'm going to use, I, I wanna do like a base color set for him and then use the color changer inside of ZBrush because I haven't used that much um, and, and try and just make a whole variety, like a rainbow of colors of, of different dragons. So uh, no, Jorge, you cannot. You cannot load brushes or alphas or materials. It's very... It just does what it does, and that's what it does. So you can't change the interface or any of that kind of stuff. But you can sculpt like crazy in it. And it starts with a a block of marble. Uh, you know, like like the days of old. You can get in there and just, just start going. Okay, so let's... Let's use orange for a while and just see, see how it feels. See how it feels on us. I'm not going to be painting these little circles until later. And yeah, so uh, let's, let's work on the webbing. Now, this is something, this is a method I hardly ever use because it's kind of the old retopology method before the, um, the retopology brush came out. Okay. So. I gotta rem I gotta see if I even remember how to do it. But I'm gonna save this before I go any further. Okay. Yeah, it's a good sketchbook. It's great. It's great for sketching. Great, great. Okay, so I'm gonna select these wings. And then I can append a Z sphere. And if I can do it, come on. Append a Z sphere. There we go. Click that Z sphere. And you'll be able to see it. If I solo it, transparent, you can see the big Z-sphere in here. Now this works with um, move, scale, and rotate. Okay, so if I hit W to move this, I can move the Z-sphere around. And if I hit E, I can scale it. Or if I hit R, then I can rotate it. Hello from Mexico. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so basically I want to make a really small Z-sphere. And I'm only going to work on one side is this side 
So I'm going to start about here. And then, okay, let me see if I can get this going. I got to remember how to do this. Does rigging. Okay, where is it? Not make unified skin. Z sketch. Not Z sketch. Topology. Here it is. Okay. So uh, it's under topology. Then you hit edit topology. And then you can draw topology. That's what it is. Come on. There we go. I have to be in draw mode. Okay. So I have to I have to hit Q and be in draw mode. So I just I'm what it does is it makes these little it's it's kind of like the topology that the topology brush makes, okay, but it's a little bit different where you can specifically put place the points exactly where you want them. And you can see if I hover here, it's going to give me I'm going to undo back to here and it's kind of difficult to see the bones let's see okay there's one gosh dang it see it's sometimes you'll get this where it starts down here and that's not what I want okay like I said it's been a while so <laughs> and you know what Having an orange dragon is not is probably not not the best idea because all of these lines are orange and I can't even see what the heck's going on. So I'm gonna go back to that dragon. Oh goodness, I gotta turn off edit topology for a moment. We're gonna change him to like blue or something. Okay, let's change him to blue. That's too. That's gonna hurt my eyes though. There we go. Okay. <laughs> big goldfish. Uh, now he's a blue, big blue fish. <laughs> hey, if you want to scream big goldfish, it's, up, it's your prerogative. Okay, so let's go back to this. Transparent. It's in there. I'm going to roll this back to da, 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 right there. So... I forget with this method, you don't have to move the Z sphere up to where it starts. Okay, so topology, edit topology. Okay, it still has one right there. You can see it. See it kind of moving around right there. So if I make it active, I can hold down uh, Alt, tap on it, and it'll become red. And then I can just tap down the length. And if I want to go back and select the starting one again, whoops. There we go. I have to hold control to select it, not alt. Okay. I can go this way. Then whatever the red, the red circle, that's the, that's the active one. And I can close it by clicking on this and then hold control to make this one red. Now that one is where I'm going to draw from and I'm going to draw to this one. Okay, so now I'm I'm kind of making this this webbing, right? Um, and then let's make this one active again. Just continue to draw down these. Well, I could I could go from here over like this. And this one's still active, so I can click down here and go over. So this is kind of the old way that uh, you could do it. Now I just hit A, which is. Um, is a preview of the adaptive skin. Now the adaptive skin, here I'll show you, uh, I'm going to open up adaptive skin. Now if you want to open up a different menu item while, while keeping this one open, just hold down shift when you click on that menu item and they'll both be open together. Okay, but you can see right here it says Dynamesh resolution. I'm going to roll that down to zero because I don't want the, the adaptive skin to be Dynameshed, okay? So now if I hit A, you can see it kind of makes this, this thing. And that's still not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back off. And I'm going to do density 1. 
and let's see just making this whoops that's not what I want I use classic skinning so it's trying to do like two sides of this now the back is what I want the front is not <laughs> it's making some weird quad here and I'll, I'll try and fix that as I draw more of these out okay just kind of looking at this okay let's let's go back to draw mode oh yeah sometimes it'll do that and that's not what I want okay back up to here down this is and the reason they they made the retopology brush because this is really really finicky to use okay now um, I can be I can be done now like I've connected everything that I wanted this is essentially what how I want it to work except for I want it to kind of come down and and meet down in here so um, let's see if I can do this now that I have a span across nothing like open air see this that's why I'm using this method because I can't use the retopology brush to draw across open air you just can't you have to have something there to draw across so this I can click on these spans now so like right there and connect it and you'll see it halfway through it will snap these little dots all over the place I can just click there and it'll put it right in the middle so now let's see what adaptive skin looks like yeah it's looking better now it's not being weird okay so let's go click up here again and center of this one center of this one and do it again make this one active center of this one center of this one hit a for adaptive just to check it out and you can kind of see how we're building this up which is pretty cool okay so if if i have preview open like this i can click on make adaptive skin and it's going to make a new tool it's not going to add it to your current tool as a sub tool it's going to make a new tool that you then have to use append to append it to your current tool if that I know that's a lot of atom batum, but there you go. So I'm gonna append and it's right there. Click it, and now you'll see this is my construction subtool. This is my final subtool. So I'm gonna hide this one, click on this one, and we're gonna edit this guy. Okay, so now we have this this face. Okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna fast forward this. All right, and turn it down. I'm listening to some music right now listening to the cure love the cure okay uh so now what we can do it is cool right uh ian it's 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 pretty awesome how you can do that so now what you can do is like you know how it's scalloped you have scalloped scalloped wings so you can pull these up like this and it's really low resolution mesh of course so we could subdivide this so if i hit Control d subdivide it um you'll get something like this um i don't want to do that quite yet and then i i do want to add one more line down here so you can use a z modeler brush to cut one in right here it's actually going to go up and around you can see because it's turning down it's not going all the way up to this point it's giving us some some triangles in here and i'm going to do it again here actually i'm not just here i only want this one trying to decide what I want to do with that if I want it if I care <laughs> okay so because I want to bring this one down and, and have it touch the body because you can see the webbing it goes all the way to the to the body like this there we go so now we can turn off transparency we can turn on dynamic subdivisions um, and then we can turn on I don't want to turn on dynamic yet because it's it's just crunching down too small I, I guess I could but as you can see it's kind of making a, it really mushy right and I can deal with that mushiness just by keeping it and I could even Z remesh it so let's do that actually I'm gonna duplicate it hide this one we're gonna apply uh, let's see I don't want to apply this 
I'm going to subdivide it once, not three times, okay? And then get rid of that lower subdivision level so it becomes something I can really use. And then just edit this and see if I can get ZRemesher to behave. Behave, okay. Um, and I can I can put these into groups if I wanted to, like poly groups. So for example, each of these wing session sections, if I want them to, let's do select lasso. If I want each of these to be in their own poly group, I just put them inside their own. So this is a section. I can hit Control W a couple times to give it a new color. Then I'll do the same thing with this one. Okay, let's put that into like a, whatever this color is. Uh, for a game mesh, would this webbing be double or single? Typically single that has a, a double-sided material on it. So a double-sided material costs, it's more expensive for the game engine. But then the riggers will not have to rig a two-sided thing, right? It works... It's usually uh, used in like dresses or skirts or kilts or whatever that are hanging down that need to have physics collision on them. They, those kind of clothes will typically only be single sided. Sometimes they'll curl the end around so it looks like it has thickness, but it really doesn't. Um, the only character that we had on Disney Infinity that actually had a cape that had two sides was Syndrome. And the reason why we had to do it with Syndrome was um, the, the outside of his cape is a different color than the inside of his cape. And you can't do a two-sided material with two different colors. It has to be the same color. So, um, so it, it, with, in that case, what we had to do was weight each point on both the front and the back exactly so the front wouldn't clip into the back as it was being physically animated. So <laughs> there you go, long answer. All right. That's too close of colors. There we go. That's better. Okay, so now we have our three sections back. Let's let's use our Z remesher and keep groups and see if it just like gets utterly destroyed or if it gives us something we can work with. It's always a, a gamble, right? So I'm gonna turn this down to let's do a two. Keep groups and Z remesh this guy. Yeah, it just made a mess. So let's turn off keep groups and see what it does. Yeah. Just not. So, okay, that being said, what I would do, I just wanted to show you guys that technique, okay? That's, but if I want to get a cleaner one, it would be better to uh, do it myself, okay? Like, like, just draw it myself. And now that I have this temporary geometry, I was kind of hoping I could use it, but it's just kind of too messy up in here, okay? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as something I can redraw topology on. And what I'm going to do instead of moving, going everything to a point at this very top point, I'm just pulling this out so I can give myself something to draw on. Okay. So here's the wing now. What I want to do is I'm going to end the tip in quads. Okay. Instead of like this, I'm going to draw it. And up here, instead of coming to a point like that, it's just easier to control and subdivide if it's all in quads. Where to download my custom user interface? Um, I, I believe Neil will post a link to 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's right on the front page. You can just go grab it and it will also come with my, my user interface and my ruler file too. Uh, could you sculpt us pro it and remesh it with easy? Re yeah, you could, you could, but so the problem is though, this is a very, very unique piece of geometry where everything it's like a it's like a sphere with a pole right everything's getting jammed into that point right here like a kite right everything's being just forced to go up here so instead what i'm going to do is well you'll see I'll, sh I'll show you instead of going to a point up here and i could i could do this uh with the other method as well but um I'm just thinking about it now. I'll just do it with the retopology brush. So I'm going to grab this topology brush, get a small brush, and just we'll just draw this topology better. Okay, so um, now that instead of making the middle this, uh, let's see, 
trying to think what I want to do because I was trying to match the geometry up with each of these these spine things these fingers um, I'm just trying to think about that for a second hold on okay I think what I'm gonna do is kind of cross cross them over at the top so we'll try it I'm gonna subdivide this wing down though a couple times and this doesn't look bad I mean you could totally use it but and then I have to delete the lower subdivision levels because the topology brush won't work on the wing unless it is subdivided okay so let's pull this over get it a little better okay topology brush uh yeah it could be um but you want to keep it together just for like mapping reasons and stuff so i'll go like this for this one Okay, now for this one, let's see if I can do this. And then for this one, do this. I don't know if that'll work or not. It's like a puzzle, right? You're just like, okay, how can I figure out this puzzle? Um, I'm gonna undo that last one and I'm gonna take this one down this way instead. Okay, and then take this one here I don't this it's not a very good still not a very good and go, you got to go right through that through that green circle or it's not gonna work okay so now I can just do quads the rest of the thing right uh, this one didn't cross And I'm not going all the way down here. It, it gets kind of tricky when you go to the to the edge. Okay, so I do want to go through here and through here and through here. That's gonna make really small quads at the top. That's okay. Ugh, smaller brush. Uh, sometimes you'll get this this weird. It'll want to snap. That work? No. See, it's giving me a triangle. That's bad. You don't want that. Clean this up a little bit. So, the so how the topology brush works is actually the smaller the brush, the better, because and I actually have a lesson on this in my course. But you'll see these dotted lines, the black and the orange. You when you're drawing these lines, it's going to stick to one of it's gonna it has to find a space between those two where it wants to snap that green circle tooth and i'm having trouble snapping this one because there's not this is just one solid orange thing so there's no way to uh to cut it i'm gonna cut this off and redraw it and i don't know why that's not working now uh, add it with Z modeler. I mean, you could, but I'm trying to just get it done in the first place. I don't know. Let's see if I can just. I'm just struggling. Watch me struggle. There it goes. Okay. That should work. No, nope. now that's doing it on this one. Well, you know, I could actually see how, where it's connected right here. I can actually like go draw it right through that one, through this one, like on purpose, and then it'll work. See that? And then I'll have to move them later. Because all, all that matters with this topology brush is that you get, whoops, gosh dang it, is that you get crossing, crossing lines. Do it one more time through the center. Okay. Gosh dang it, you can't have two greens. If it has two greens, it won't work. Okay, there we go. And then I'll, I'll just clean all this up. <laughs> I mean, I just made a mess. That's probably even worse than I had it before. Okay, I'm gonna turn my draw size down to one. Tap on the surface. Split to unmask points. Arrow down. And here is our crappy looking mesh. Okay, so what we can do 
just clean it up by uh, just smoothing this out. I will smooth these quads out and then I can run them down the length of this a little bit. Because smooth will not affect the edges. So you have to pull these edges down by hand. And then the interior will just kind of even out. Oops. All right. It's, it's still kind of a mess, but it'll work. Okay. And it's cleaner than it was before, so that'll have to do. And I can subdivide this now and it will be much cleaner. So it's been subdivided. Now I have a denser, denser geometry that I can mess with and make those scallops. So if I need to, yeah. Is there a way to force smooth? Not that I know of. Because then it'll kind of collapse on itself if, it, if, if you do that. So not that I know of. Okay, so now I can get rid of this other webbing, this stuff. I'll just hide it for now in case I want to use it for some reason later. Okay, so let's push it through. So the the wing wing fingers, I don't know what you call those things, come through and you can see them on this side. Wing fingers, I'm sure that's what they're called. Smooth open edges, did you find something? I can't watch that video right now, but I'll have to check it out after. Thanks, Neil. Let's pull these all the way down. See, now that we have more geometry, we can just shape these by hand just make them look better and then we can add thickness later we can state shape these so they kind of scoop in too Oh, it's Ask ZBrush. Oh, nice. Okay. And if you guys ever wonder what Ask ZBrush is, if you don't know, um, you can do a hashtag Ask ZBrush and ask questions. And uh, Joseph Drust from Pixel Logic, they'll, he has either already created a video to answer your question, or he will, if you push publish your hashtag to uh, Twitter, they'll with that hashtag ask ZBrush, they'll see it. And if, uh, if they think they can answer your question with a video, they, they will and they'll post it to their ask ZBrush uh, YouTube channel. It's a really, really cool resource that I don't know of any other company that does that. They are fingers, awesome. Well, they, you know, if you think about it, they, they are Fingers, especially feral, you know, I'm thinking, we were talking about this last week, um, the, the kind of bats that their wings are their arms, right? And their the little things are fingers, and they just have kind of webbed fingers, essentially, and that's their wings, right? So, hey Falco, how's it going? All right, so let's, uh, let's mirror and weld these. Oh, it's got subdivision levels. Let's kill those. And weld it. There we go. Oh, Twitch chat finally reloads for you. <laughs> well, dang it. We don't have many people on today. 145. That's about half of what I usually have. So I don't know what's going on. If you guys, if you just didn't see. 
flanges. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. There we go. There we go. I had to put up with the delay over on Mixer. Interesting. People go back to work and it's almost summer. So going outside is a nice option. Uh, kind of, but people are going outside and where I'm from, I'm from Utah and the where we have a huge spike happening in the in the coronavirus right now. And it's like people are just thinking it's over and it's not. So why did you become so experienced and skilled? Uh, thanks for that, by the way. Um, it's it's just practice. I've been I've been making characters in 3D for about 23 years, so I've been I've been at it for quite a while. And just recently, the last five or six years, I've been sculpting. So, I mean, you still sculpt with traditional modeling, but not like this, right? It's not. This is like sculpting, and before it was like box modeling, so just pulling points around in space. I think the hey, what's up, John? How you doing, man? Yeah, the Jap Japanese promo threw them off. So I, yeah, I explained before what 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 that was, and the streamer before me is uh, Japanese, speaks Japanese. I don't know if he is Japanese, but he he speaks Japanese, and so he does his stream in Japanese. So. Um, that's and he I don't believe he he's actually a Pixelogic employee. I don't believe he streamed last night. Last night or this morning, I'm not sure when he streams, but so it kind of just pushes it over into my stream. <laughs> okay. You think yeah, anytime's a great time to start learning 3D. So yes, especially with um, 3D printing on its way up and VR on its way up and, you know, 3D, 3D movies aren't going anywhere. I love, I love printing out my stuff. It's, uh, it's really, really cool to hold your art in your hand. Particularly if it's on a store shelf, <laughs> that's that's got to be the coolest, craziest thing ever. A short two-day print, yeah, short. <laughs> yep, yep. And not not to not to promote my course again, but I have several lessons on how to prep your model for three D printing in in the course, and how to troubleshoot and all that kind of stuff. So. If you're really interested in 3D printing, you can learn that there. Oh, you just start started the course Friday. Awesome. So, Mark, where where are you wanting to take it to? And please, please um, reach out. And if you're if you're not in the new community, let me know. You can send an email to support at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Oh, you like it? Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Yeah, let me know. So usually when you're wanting to get a model out of ZBrush, you will typically want to reduce the poly count in some way, whether that's through Z remeshing, through uh, decimating, which decimating is like triangulating your character at a very small resolution for 3D printing, typically. Um, and then if you're wanting to take it to a game engine, you'll typically have to retopologize it and then bake all the information from the high resolution mesh to the low resolution mesh. That's that's kind of the workflow. And I that's I, I teach all of that stuff in there. So if you're interested, well, you're, you're already in there, but if anybody else is interested, I teach all of that stuff. So that's in the last module, Mark, if you wanna check that out. But it's best to get good at making characters in ZBrush first before you start to want to take it out anywhere else. Oh, out of ZBrush for rendering? So um, 
there is there's a, a a section on rendering in Keyshot. I also show you how to render in Marmoset Toolbag, and there's a new section coming very well, hopefully soon, on uh, rendering in Blender, like EV and Cycles. So hopefully that's hopefully that's coming soon. It's really easy with like Gozi, um, or if you're rendering in Keyshot, it's really easy with the uh, Keyshot Bridge. And Keyshot has a very special pricing for ZBrush. So with there's there it's called Keyshot for ZBrush, and it's um, you can you can get it through the Pixelogic store, buy it through there, and it's 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 a really really nice ray tracing renderer, and I have a couple of lessons on that. It's in the it's in the well it's it's going to be moved to the main course, but right now it's in the uh, additional section, additional training. So you can find the 3D printing and the rendering over in additional training if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, David, you're wanting, you wanted to buy a $300 printer. It just depends on um, what kind of printer. Like, is it an extrusion printer? Like, is it pushing plastic through a hot tip? If usually a $300 printer is that, there is a very cheap uh, resin printer that I, I purchased not too long. Well, I think around Christmas they were having a deal on one, but it's really small and stinky. <laughs> Call it little stinky. Um, but if you're wanting prints here, let me grab one. So let's see, where's my, there we go. Okay, so if you're if you're wanting prints like this, this is done on a Form 2, which I have a Form 2 sitting right here. This wasn't printed on that one particularly, but um, this, yeah, this is the best quality you're gonna get is on a, a resin printer. Liquid resin is what you wanna look for, but they can be expensive unless you get a, a smaller one. Here, one second. It's so small I can bring it over and show you. So this this guy right here, I can't even remember what it's called, the Photon. Anyway, the Photon, this guy, I, I haven't even pulled the plastic out of it yet and used it, um, but I, I just know that they're they're prone to be stinky. There, there we go, that's the front of it. So um, anyway, this, this whole thing opens up and it has a bay in here and you put your resin down in here. Yeah, it's so tiny, but it does it does fantastic prints. You get really high quality prints out of this thing, but the 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 print like you can see this blue right here, that is the the biggest you can print and it only goes so high. So if you're printing out like like D&D figures or Warhammer figures, those little tiny ones, this is fantastic. Right? So, yeah, you do, you do not want to have this in your house you would want it out in a shed or a garage or a warehouse or something like that and it's yeah the resin is quite quite toxic so i would um but you also any printer is toxic because an extrusion printer um it will it's melting plastic right so the melted plastic is going through a hot tip and it's melting and letting off fumes so that's going to be smelly and stinky but it's not liquid resin that your kids can like touch and get on their fingers and that kind of stuff. It's just a spool of plastic that goes through that hot thing. So I, I still would recommend having, not having that in the house if you can help it because it'll, it's letting off fumes. So, okay. Um, and also, you know, uh, you've seen Nate, Nate Walker's print, right? That I, that I just barely showed on, I just pushed it out to Facebook not too long ago. Let me see if I can find it. So his, this, he prints big and he, but it takes a lot of sanding and a lot of using like um, harsh chemicals like acetone and stuff like that. So this, this one right here, um, he printed, he printed this about this big. Let me see if I can find his Instagram. That'd be better. Okay. 
I'll just show you. He's got the, oh, this isn't him. Okay, well, I'll have to find it later, but, um, is it this one? Just guessing. Nope, not him either. All right, we're just going on a tour of Nathan Walker's. So anyway, he's he printed it out really, really large, and it turned out fantastic. It looks really great. Oh, I know where it is. I have it. Okay, hold on a second. Sometimes my brain just goes crazy, you know, I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. I just want to show you the print. That's the print right there, painted print. So there we go. Now you can you can see he's he's sanded it, lots of sanding, lots of cleaning it up. But you can see how big it is compared to like these tools sitting here. It's really tall. And that was done with a an extrusion style printer but an extrusion style printer will make steps it'll make stair steps that you need to sand down and make smooth so if you have any surface detail like this it gets really tricky to get in there and sand you'll have to file it like with little dental files you know really or jewelry files right dental files are gonna file you too but <laughs> the like jewelry files little you can find kits of them on on Amazon but you have to get in there and just kind of file them down okay <laughs> Look more handsome. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's see what time it is. 147. Let's see if we have time to make a, a, a scale insert multi mesh brush. That'll be fun, right? Okay. So let's see. I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. Let's append a, let's append what? Well, I can guess I can just append a star. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Leave it up to Neil to find him. Yeah, he's a fantastic student and he's done a lot of prints. You can see more of his prints on his art station. He's done a uh, one from Creature Box that he he also printed out really large. I want to get an interview with him and talk to him about his process. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the star and here's something to note, a little tip for you. If you want to replace, let's solo it so you can see it. This is just a, a star that I appended to the bottom of the subtool list. So if you want to change this shape, there's a couple ways to do it. If you open the gizmo, there's this gear. You can click on the gear and you can pick a shape right in here, right? Um, or if you have my brushes, there are these insert multi mesh primitive brushes. And if I click on those, you can kind of see them right along here. And the difference between my primitives that are here versus what's in uh, the gear, these are editable as far as like how many points you can have, how many, how big they are and all that kind of stuff. They have these little, well, I can just show you. I'll click on a poly cylinder, okay? So here's a poly cylinder and you can see these little handles this blue one and this red one, okay? And it will replace that, um, that, that star with whatever you have here, okay? So see, I can, I can increase and decrease the count of loops along the length of this thing. And then I can go to this one and increase or decrease the count here, okay? And this, this would work pretty well for what I wanna do with these, uh, with these, scales going down his back. Okay, I might just use that. Or I can go back to Gizmo 3D and I can click on any of these. Now this is my cylinder. Okay, this is what the one I made. It's It comes with these brushes. Um, I can replace it with a cube or any of these. It will swap it out, okay? So I'm gonna use this, um, I think I'm gonna use a cylinder. Okay, and I'm gonna turn on the floor because I want to know exactly where this is in space. I'm gonna bring it a little bit on this side of the line and then scale it down here. Okay. And then I'm what what you want to do with an insert multi-curve brush, what that means is I want to draw along a curve and it's gonna repeat this shape along that curve. So it's gonna repeat these scales all the way along the curve, okay? And that's kind of the idea that we're we're going for because otherwise I'd have to ins I'd have to insert a sphere and edit it and then duplicate it and move it down the tail 
one at a time, which you can totally do. There's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little, it takes a little longer to do. Okay, so from the front, um, I'm gonna make a big enough brush that will shoot all the way through both sides. You can think of a brush like a, a sphere instead of just a flat circle. So the circle is a sphere and it's gonna go all the way through your object. So you can just kind of go like this. And I can turn symmetry on, which would, which would help. But I want this scale to kind of go into his body somewhat. So that's kind of the idea I'm thinking about. Then I can do a mirror and weld, but I'm gonna mirror it front to back instead of left to right. And that will put a, a loop down the center and that will mirror it across the front. So I, when I do that, you can see mirror and weld on the very right hand side, there's X, Y, and Z. And I think it's Z. So I'm gonna turn X off, turn Z on. I can actually mirror it in both directions because it's mirrored this way as well. <laughs> Second favorite, yep, right? He's great. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna leave X on. Let's turn it, okay. So you can see what happened here. It mirrored across from front to back and from left to right and it made this little weirdness right here. I'm gonna, to fix that, I'm just gonna grab this and move it on this side of the center line, anything that's messed up. And on this one, okay, just move it to that side. And then we're gonna hit mirror and weld again, and that gets rid of it. Okay, so bump, 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 super cool. Okay, I need to get rid of, I wanna uncrease all, I don't need creases. Now I want these scales to be thin at the top and kind of thicken up down towards the base. So I'm gonna turn symmetry on X, but I'm also gonna turn it on Z. So that will have symmetry in, in four directions. You can see the four dots indicating which direction. So if I move, like say this dot out here, it's gonna move four dots. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so I wanna make this a little sharper, sharper scale. And then I want to mask off the center, which I'm just gonna mask that and then invert it can't really it doesn't look like I did anything but I did so basically I can move this now without affecting the center line and I'm just pulling it out so it's thick at the base and skinny at the top and then making it really skinny at the top I gotta be careful not to get too close up here to cross the center but really close I want it really thin up there and when you're doing 3d printing with anything thin this is kind of how you want to do it because it will, um, it will look thin at the edge. So let me see, one second. Let me grab this 3D print here and go, let's go, um, there we go. So uh, basically like this sword, right? The sword, this was, this was printed on a form three in white this was printed in white and i hit it with a, a primer a gray primer and this this sword is a cheese knife you can see it's it's like a cheese knife right all right ian t thanks man i got to take off soon here anyway um and you'll see it's kind of hard to see let me see if i can put it in the light so can you see it has this this knife edge on it right so this is the thinnest point right here and then it gets thick right here and it's same with the whiskers these whiskers are thin, or they're they're pretty thick, and then they get thin at the tips. So it it just kind of when you're 3D printing, you have to think about the structure because it's actually going to be in real world, right? So you want to um, make it so it can it's not going to snap and break. Yeah, he doesn't blow out the camera. He's, I painted him. <laughs> so I painted I painted everything, I think. Oh, I haven't painted I haven't painted my uh the cowboy on the dinosaur yet, this guy. Okay, so I can subdivide this and we can just kind of look at and see it looks like a heart, an upside down heart, but this is essentially kind of a, a, a scale, right? It's working as a scale. So uh let's we can turn off the floor now, clear this out. Yeah, it looks like it totally looks like a guitar pick, doesn't it? 
Okay, and then we can inflate the center even more. Maybe not that much. Okay. It's a, yeah, it's totally a guitar pick. All right, a bunch of guitar picks all along the spine. So um, now what we can do is turn this into an insert multi mesh. And what I want to do is, is it a certain brand of paint? Yes, I can tell you what that is. It's, uh, it's this. It's this, it's called Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray. So it gets blurry if I put it too close to the camera, but you can find it on Amazon. It's, it's an imported, uh, but it makes really super fine mist as you spray it. So it doesn't uh, get into your details and fill them up. Okay. And that was recommended to me by um, Aaron Bernhardt, which he is the lead character. Um, well, he was the lead character modeler of uh, merchandise at Blizzard. So like those Overwatch characters, those big ones, that's that's where it comes from. So, <laughs> and you're welcome. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try and go, um, if you go to B, you open up your brush menu by hitting B and you can see down here, it says create insert mesh create insert multi mesh, create nano mesh. Um, what we're wanting to do is create an insert mesh right here. Okay. So, oh, the current brush is not an S brush. Would you, I want to make a new one. Okay. So, so you can see it up here. It, it added this up to a, an insert multi mesh. And this is, that, that's exactly how I made this one is I had a whole bunch of sub tools and I made this insert multi mesh out of that. And now what I can do is Yep, that's right. Uh, no, it does not fill the gaps. It's too fine. So you'll want to fill the gaps with something else. Like, uh, what is it called? Mean green or something like that. It's what the Warhammer figure painters use to fill in gaps. It's sandable stuff. It's like green green stuff, or I'm trying to remember the name of it. But it's pliable for a little while, and you can get it into the seams, and then you just let it dry, and then sand it back down, and then paint over the top. Okay. So I'm going to go to stroke and turn on curves. And then we'll see what, what happens when I use this curve step. Okay. So there, there you go. That's the start of it. Oh, they call it green stuff. Right, right, right. So you can see the orientation is, is wrong. Okay. It's like pointing down the length of the curve. So this is, it's been a while since I've done this, but I think you can do, you can do the orientation. Uh, da, 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 curve radius, focus, shift, distance. I'm trying to remember where the, the orientation of this is, or if I have to like, like actually orient it the way I want it and then make the brush again. I can't remember, but I'll have to figure that out. Let's see. I do I think it's under modifiers. Curve radius, focal shift. This, yeah, this all has to do with the curve itself. Okay, let me let me try and make it again and turn it. So let's try this. Do it again. Create insert mesh. I'm gonna append it to this one. Ah. Never mind. Did it do it? Nope. Okay, hold on. It doesn't look like, I think I have to make a new one. Okay. Oh, got to do draw. Why is it scaling it? Gosh, dang it. <laughs> it's like doing this thing. Uh, switch, switch back. <laughs> Still making me draw this out. All right. Hey, Sergi, how's it going? Let's select a different one. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's act. Oh, because I didn't turn curve on. That would help. Duh. 
All right, you got to turn curve onto the brush before it will do that. There we go. Ah, there we go. Check it out. Hey, what do you know? All right. <laughs> His face is all sticking through there. Okay. Now I don't want them that close together and I want them kind of buried in inside the into the depth so you can click on this depth and you can bury these in there more so when you draw along a surface it buries them uh, and it's not oriented properly okay and we got to turn symmetry off <laughs> still not working I'm gonna have to work on the orientation offline because um, that is time, but I that that is enough to get you going on an insert multi brush, right? So you should be able to figure it out from there, and then you can go into stroke, and you can edit uh, the curve functions and the curve modifier. So you can set up spacing and snap distance, things like that. So let me see curve smoothness. Anyway, there's a way to set up this the how how far away they are from each other. Curve step. So I'm gonna increase that. There you go. See how it puts them farther apart? I don't want them that much farther apart, but that's where you can edit that is under curve. So let's go like two point or one point five and see. There we go. I just need to get them oriented properly, and I can also make them go from small to thick to small again. See, they're kind of small in the back of his head and then they get bigger going down his back and then they get really small going down his tail. You can go into the stroke menu, go into the curve modifiers and there's this curve fall off right here. So you can go from small to large to small again. Like this. So as you draw your curve, it's going to change the size of the scales. Or it should anyway. Mm, didn't do it. Why not? I'll have to figure this out. It's been a while. It's been a while. I don't know. <laughs> Usually do the control drag with the gizmo and then bend the curve to see where I want it, but I'm not sure if there's any negatives. Uh, there shouldn't be. You can do it that way. Oh. You need to click the tab that says size. Okay. Oh, right. Duh. What am I doing? Intensity? Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay. It's doing it. But it's squishing it and then making it big and then squishing it down again, which I guess is kind of what it looks like. Anyway, I'll have to keep messing with it until I get it to work. And then what you can do is well what i would do is i would put the the dragon into um two halves cut him into two halves so he has a poly group um on the left and one on the right and then what you can do is use this frame mesh so let me see if i can do it really quick um i'm gonna duplicate this body hide the original and go select lasso i guess we're gonna run late today a little bit hide this side See if I got it. Okay, let's turn on double to make sure we got it. Okay, so if I hit Control W, then invert that, Control W. Now we have two different sides. Okay, yeah, you know, but it, it is just, it, it is easier to just duplicate the scales for sure. But if you remember how to do this and you get you get it so you can make one really fast. Um, when I was doing the, or if you have something really, really tricky, uh, like I, I did the Zenyatta baseball skin. I, I made one for that, for the stitches in the baseball and it worked out really, really well. Um, let me show you really fast. So like Zenyatta right here, see these stitches? So I made one stitch and then I just duplicated it all the way around the baseball and I, you know, made poly groups and just kind of did what I'm showing you right now. 
Okay, but now we have two two sides to him. Then we just basically go grab this brush and click on stroke and say frame mesh under the curve functions. So frame mesh will put a curve all the way down the length of him. Okay. And then if you click on that curve, oops, with this brush, it should anyway. Oh, see, it's not, it's not orienting them correctly. So if they were oriented correctly, you can see that it puts it all along the length, but all the way around him. So essentially I would get them into place um, and then I could, I could organize them and then scale them and shrink them and, and delete the ones I don't need. But that puts it right down his back. And that's, that part is much quicker than duplicating the scales down the, down the length. So it just depends on, you know, what, what you're up to. So anyway, I will, uh, off screen, I'll, I'll adjust the orientation of that a little better. So then it'll work. <laughs> yeah, Doug, for sure, right? All right, everybody. That is it for today. Uh, yeah, but I duplicated the mesh first, so no, right? So that's why I duplicated it. So I, I still have them all in the original mesh, but I duplicated it just for this purpose, and then I can delete it when I'm done. That's the beauty of polygroups. They're just temporary, and you can just duplicate it and use it, and, and uh, yeah, there you go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for, for hanging out. Um, yep, I'm just finishing up the, the, the stream. Sorry about that. But uh, these are recorded. So Pixlogic will put these up on their YouTube Pixlogic channel. You can always go to, just do a search in Google ZBrush Live, and you'll be able to find me there and see all my past streams. Or you can just do a search for Shane Olson ZBrush, and you'll find all of my past streams. And it's, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch up there. I think this is... I don't even know what number episode I'm on. It's over a hundred something. So anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out and uh, we're getting closer. So, all right, take care everybody. Have a wonderful week and we will see you next Monday. Until then, happy sculpting. All right, cheers. We'll see ya.